Hey all, Ryan here, and welcome to my FlossTube channel, Ryan Ryan McGuy. Um, today we've got a lot of ground to cover. Uh, we're going to be chatting about stitching predominantly. We've got sewing today, we've got knitting, we have a new craft, uh, we have a couple of giveaways, um, we've got some stored solutions, and uh, yes, yeah, so we've got a lot of things to cover. Um, one thing I, I did want to mention though is this, this video is kind of a special one year anniversary edition because um, it's been um, it's been one year since my very first virgin floss tube video and uh, I know some of you have been around on this bumpy ride from the beginning and uh, and I really want to thank you very much for tolerating all of my growing pains um, I also know that there's a lot of great floss tubers out there with some amazing content and I know I, I find it almost impossible uh, to watch even half of the ones that I that I really want to um, so I'm, I'm so grateful that you're tuning in and um, letting me keep you company while you craft away. I love the comments that you leave and I love the interactions that we have. So, um, so really thank you. Thank you so much for being here with me and for making this such an amazing experience um, to be part of a community that uh, you know really kind of took me by surprise. I, I was not expecting this when I had embarked on um, cross-stitching as a hobby and uh, and I'm so grateful for this opportunity so thank you um, and and I know that we've got a lot of newcomers here as well uh, I uh, <laughs> you know thank you thank you for dropping by uh, thanks for tuning in especially to the last uh, video it was all about a whip parade and I think everyone likes a whip parade so I, I did see a bump and increase in some of my um, subscriber count and I, I almost have to wonder if maybe my mom might have had something to do with that. Um, you see, uh, she asked me the other week, um, she says like, Ryan, can I, what, how, how do I watch your YouTubes? And, and so I, I said, okay, so I, I sent her a link. I mean, yeah, it, it took about a year, <laughs> but, um, but she, she tuned in and she watched and I think that she approved, at least that, that's what she told me, <laughs> and um, so hi mom, thanks for watching. Anyway, I think she might have maybe possibly chatted me up to some of her friends, her, her golf buddies, or curling buddies, or pickleball buddies, and, um, and uh, so if Dory sent you here, welcome. Thank you for joining us, and um, and mom, thank you too. <laughs> so I hope um, I hope I won't embarrass you at all in any way, and don't embarrass me either. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, bef before we dive into everything, I I did in my last video I invited um, I invited you to ask me any questions that you might have um, so I can address or we can have something to talk about in this video and um, and sure enough awesome you guys really delivered I, I got some some great questions I think I think what I'll do is um, I'll kind of pepper them. I, I, I wrote the, I wrote them down here. I, I, I copied them and um, I'll kind of sprinkle them throughout the video maybe as they come up organically. Uh, one thing I did want to talk about just to kind of get it out of the way here is um, I, t I talked about my fabric storage last time and um, the way that I uh, the struggle I was having organizing my linens and um, and the solution that I came up with I just brought again a little sample um, you know it's using the Marie Kondo technique I folded them up and uh, got these little storage boxes from Ikea so they can shit so they can sit on a bookshelf um, in my craft closet and I can see them all at once and they're nice and happy um, arranged sort of chromatically um, to the best of my ability and um, yeah I, everyone seemed to respond really positively to that so so I'm super grateful and um, you know I thought I don't know if you 
if you want to take a look at how I do the actual folding, maybe I'll do a little quick video or an Instagram reel or something just demonstrating how I do some folding. Anyway, all this to say, this was the segue into flaw storage. And um, Lorraine Bergstrom, hi Lorraine, um, asked if it would be possible if I'd mind showing how I store my flaws. And, um, you know, as I'm always looking for new storage ideas, and I'm sure many other people are too. And yes, I am always looking for new storage ideas. I can share with you how I keep my DMCs um, and then my hand-dyed flosses. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you it was based on a concept that I saw um, called, um, oh, where is it? Where is it? Annie's Keepers. It was based on um, a, a system called Annie's Keepers, and I don't know how popular or common it is. I saw it on a, on a Canadian website, um, and I, the concept spoke to me, but I found it a little on the pricier side. So what I did is kind of my own version, and, and, and this is for the DMC flosses, and um, I took some dry cleaner hangers for, for my pants, and I took some tiny little binder rings, and I hung them up on a hanger and the hangers sit on a curtain rod or on a on a clothing rod inside my craft closet and uh, yeah I, I arranged them uh, numerically and uh, I, I really kind of like the way they look I can like seeing them all at once and um, you know they, they get a little messy at times but um, but it really helps me identify which ones I'm missing. Um, I can take them down in little blocks or bundles and, and do any matching that I have. Um, so I just brought two. Um, I've got, I think, nine, nine in total. And, um, and <laughs> uh, so yeah, th this, is, this is just to show you what, what I, um, how I'm keeping my DMC flosses. Uh, I, th I think ideally I wanted to take these and not necessarily have them on a hanger, but keep these um, paper rods and have them sit inside a bin um, so that um, the whole thing would be more portable. They'd all be protected. I mean, my, my closet is enclosed, so I'm not too worried about them getting dusty or dirty. But, um, but uh, yeah, this... Uh, this is my DMC, uh, my DMC floss solution. Uh, the awkward thing, what's awkward about it? Um, some of these metal rings are a little bit of a struggle to take off. And um, also when I'm kidding up a project, I have to decide, do I, do I hang them back up when I'm done? Um, I do have a little box that I keep aside with, um, floss that's sort of near the end of its life it's not worth hanging up again but if I if I need uh, for a little project it's available to me so this this is my DMC solution um, I'll just put that down here and then just as an example for my hand dyed flosses uh, this is this is what we've got going on I've got a few a few brands here that I, I keep them all on this one big ring and then each um, brand or, or product label each has its own ring um, I've got uh, I was a floss of the month club member to um, Rolanda's um, hand dyed by Rolanda so you can tell her color story is is um, quite intense, very saturated, very strong colors. Um, we've got uh, the Roxy Floss Co. over here. Um, I try to arrange these sort of in chromatic order in some vague way. It's successful sometimes, other not. And then what else have I got here? Classic Color Works. Uh, gentle arts these I arrange um, numerically and uh, yeah this this has been working out for me because again when I when I want to kit up I'll just take them off the binder ring it's easy for me to see what colors I'm missing or what I need 
take it off the binder ring, put it in my kit, and, and I'm good to go. And then when I'm done, I'll just hang them back up again. So uh, I've, I've got a bunch of other brands too, but this, this was big enough for me to handle here. So that's, that's my flaws. Uh, what, let's, I guess, let's just get right into this. Um, I've got my project cards here. I uh, will start, I think, with some of the FFOs, or the, the fi final finished objects. Uh, the first one that I wanted to share with you is the, the Frisian Band Sampler, which was um, the Modern Folk Embroidery Everto. Roxy Flasco collaboration. I shared it with you um, in my last video where where it was fully finished. Well, no, it was, I had to take out a, a diamond or two and um, anyway, it was fine. And I think, did I mention what it was I wanted to make with it? Um, th this is what I ended up doing with it. So <laughs> I, I, my vision was to have a needle book. I wanted to create a needle book, but not the kind that you would keep in a in a kitted project, uh, like with a thread bed. I wanted a needle book where I would keep all of my needles that I have in inventory. And I'll, I'll just show you what I'm using right now, and that might give you a better idea of, of what it was that I want to do. So this is just um, uh, an old uh, sort of a album from Muji and uh, instead of photos I just uh, included all of my need my John James my Bowen peacemakers um, the Saju anchor clover etc and so I, I wanted to translate this somehow into this solution and um, so here it is. <laughs> it's, I just used the same linen to create these sort of two pockets. And um, I don't know if you remember the, um, I don't know when it started, but uh, there was a trend for a while where people would create these sort of quilted um, fabric dust covers or jackets for paperback books. And so when you're you know, riding the bus or something, you can tuck your Harlequin romance in <laughs> and um, and uh, enjoy your romance on the run with it. So the, the structure, um, the inspiration came from that structure. And um, so it's got two pockets here. And uh, right now I, I just have slipped in, um, you know, my, my little needle cards. And uh, I think ultimately what I'd like to do is create an insert that I can that I can anchor inside here and then have pages of maybe felt or pockets that I could include more of my needles and it'll and it'll operate more like like a book with an, with needles inside it. But I'm I'm very pleased with the way that this turned out. It's um, it's uh, you know, I'll just hold it closer. <laughs> Yeah, love the colors. This, these were all my color choices. Um, I did not get the kit, um, so I had to pick my own colors. And I think, uh, on the whole, it was it was pretty successful. So, um, agree or not, but <laughs> um, so it be. But uh, I have started seeing these on Instagram um, from people who are framing them, and, and they really do look beautiful. The, this, this has been a fantastic project. And honestly, I'm glad that I can um, create this kind of solution because, uh, um, yeah, I can enjoy it in a, in a, in a way that, that gives me pleasure. And it's not stuck behind glass. Um, it's, uh, it's very tactile and dimensional and um, and it makes me happy so so eventually you know look for me to create this little pocket insert whatever that may look like um, I, I kept the I kept the selvage um, because it's it's Weigart and that's their signature so I, I kept the selvage also just to minimize the bulk so that's my fission band sampler uh, final finished object what is next? Oh, so, 
so look at this. I don't know how easily you can see. Um, you know, I'll, I'll take it out of the pocket. The, the, like I said, this is a photo album and um, I had some old photographs in here. Uh, this one was of my grandmother and her two sisters. Can you see that? Any reflection? It's a little bit dark, but how sweet is that? This is their uh, going out for church outfits. And um, my grandmother, Jenny, is here on the left. And Mary and Lena, I'm not sure if they made the coats, but I just love the hats. I love the scarves, the gloves, um, the way everything is coordinated. Um, that's so sweet, just makes me happy. So, uh, next final finished object. If, if you remember, um, in my last video, I started, I, I shared a new start with you um, called A Piece of My Heart. It's uh, by Lola Crow, and uh, she has a shop on Etsy. And, um, and this, is, this is what I was working on. Um, when we last uh, left each other and I was struggling a little bit with it. Um, I elected to change some of the colors and I wasn't happy with my choices. And I also found, um, I don't know if you've noticed this as well, but when you sort of unstitch or, or you frog on Black Ada, it, it really left a lot of fibers behind. and. It, and, and then they kept getting worked in as I was stitching through them and that really distracted me. So I kind of ditched this and started again. So then this is, I guess, a, a new start. It's a finish and it's a final finish. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna try this again. I'm, I was getting some wicked glare that really bothered me. So, so let's try this again. Um, is that okay guys I think this is the best this is the best that we're gonna get right now um, sorry for the glares it's kind of crazy so this is piece of my heart I'm really happy with the way it turned out and you might um, recognize the frame I used this originally to do uh, my French pastry, which I just happen to have right here. Um, the, yeah, the, this, this is what I had at first. And, oh, and you can see my lacing here on the back. <laughs> so this is, this is what I had in here at first, but I think that the, that the heart really, um, looks a lot better with the with the black frame and the gray woodwork in the back so yes i did finish it in time for valentine's day so um so peter got his valentine and uh and i was grateful for that so it was it was a really fun stitch it was nice it was you know every square was five by five there were a total of eight colors and uh, once i decided on which colors to use um, I think the called for one of the reds was a little too Christmassy for me. So I did a swap out and then the rest kind of followed. And, um, and yeah, there's my piece of my heart. Now what else? Oh, okay. So this one is, uh, you know what? Let's, yeah, let, let's talk about this one. This one was one I stitched um, before Christmas. And it was uh, it was meant to be a gift. I need to fully finish it. I I won't bother showing you um, the the finished object because I can show it to you here. Is that right side up? <laughs> womp womp. Or womp womp. <laughs> uh, this design I got from. Uh, son of a stitch son of a stitch and um he was running uh initiative i i can't remember what it was in connection with but 
he had, I think, 30 prompts um, throughout one month, and every day he shared a design that was based on or inspired by that prompt. And um, I can't even remember what the prompt was for this one. I'm sorry, but um, but uh, I yeah I, I stitched this. I'm gonna turn it into a needle book and um, or a thread bed or whatever. I've I've got some fabric here um, that that I've had in my stash. This this was uh, on sale like eighty percent off at Michaels, and so I thought you know that these colors these colors might work out well. No? What do you think? It's DMC. It's done on... Oh, I don't know what the count is. DMC. Uh, this is a linen. This is the linen that came with um, um, Historistic Mooster. So I can't remember the actual brand name. It might be uh, 24. 25 count it's like 25 threads per centimeter um, so maybe 36 38 count um, just sort of an off-white linen um, it has a lot of back stitching everything I think is uh, is surrounded by back stitching and I'm not a big back stitch person but I really appreciate the difference that a that a good back stitch makes um, before I, before I did the back stitching, I should have taken a photograph just so you could see how it sort of transforms um, the, the final object, especially with the words. Uh, you know, it really helps it pop. So, womp womp, son of a stitch, finished. And uh, the reason I'm sharing this, um, the person who will be receiving this as a gift um, is very busy and probably won't be watching this. So I'm not naming any names, but that's why I didn't show it earlier, but I know this person is gonna be far too busy, um, at least now anyway. So um, by bringing this up and talking about it, I'm hoping it will sort of give me the motivation to have it finished the next time we chat so I can show you the final finish before I give it away, because as soon as you give it away, I, I don't have anything to show, so. That was my womp womp. Now, on this one, we've got a combo. We've got some sewing and we've got some stitching. I'll start, uh, I'll start with the stitching. Uh, this, you recall, I, I think I mentioned it in my plans of the last video. It's um, Ink Circles, Mantis Life, this was actually picked up for me, courtesy of um, Michelle G, Bendy Stitchy, um, in Acorns and Threads when my friend Ellen was down there visiting. And so um, I asked her to pick something out and, and so we, well, sort of stitched this together. And uh, anyway, Mantis Life Ink Circles. And and I'm gonna say I finished this, and, and you'll see why <laughs> I'm, I'm pausing a little bit. This is, oh, this is what I've done. I love the fabric, I love the flosses. It's, um, I don't know if I would have picked out this chart on my own. Um, Per se, but I, I love the way that Tracy handled the border. It's it's um, really interesting. It's got the repetitive um, motifs. It's got uh, asymmetry and variation. Um, you have a little bit of unresolved um, um, motifs here, and uh, and it's cute. It's love, pray, eat, and why do I say? Oh yeah, so. <laughs> It's a praying mantis. Love, pray, eat. Maybe, so I'm calling this finished for now. And maybe you can see the difference between the two. Uh, the chart, if you notice, in the hands of the praying mantis is um, her dinner. <laughs> and yeah. It's like she is enjoying 
the head of a little critter and their disembodied their, their dismembered body is in her arms and honestly I'm a pacifist call me a pacifist that's okay I, I can handle that um, but I did not want to have a poor little cricket or grasshopper or insect um, for all of eternity or as long as this will last I, I, I didn't want to have it um, in her clutches it just it just didn't sit right with me so I haven't figured out what I'm gonna do with it um, I think maybe I'll put a few little ants maybe on on the the branch I'll put a few little ants where they've not been eaten yet I know she has to eat and that's what this is all about love pray eat um, but I thought let's keep them alive in in this representation and um, and this will be a little more palatable for me <laughs> so the the flosses I used were called for all it's a combination of DMC and where did it go? DMC um, and uh, and um, what's the CCT? Oh, classic, classic color works. And uh, the fabric, the linen, which is beautiful, is on uh, seraphim, and it's a forty count. So I'm I'm going to keep this aside because we are going to come back and revisit it. And what I did want to show you about sewing I'm gonna squeeze in sewing is I made a project bag <laughs> I um, I can sew I have a new sewing machine a Juki which is uh, absolutely amazing to use like it, it really is a very motivating for me to, to sew things now so I've never worked with vinyl before, so I thought, let's let's have a go. And so we picked a very simple design. Um, this actually was from, um, I mean, I have I have several project bags that have vinyl, and um, the one that I used as an inspiration for this one is um, from Sheba Designs. And uh, that what is this a? Oh yeah, so this this is a Sheba design. We'll talk about this one next so I just used that as inspiration and um, yeah I had a lot of fun this fabric if you can believe it was from Dollarama and uh, it was four dollars <laughs> for for um, cut one yard and they had two uh, designs um, in this particular collection so we've got our bank of stormtroopers here and then a little Millennium Falcon and uh, yeah this is my first time sewing vinyl and it went okay I was not mad I did not get upset um, this was also my first time doing self binding and um, you know, let's just zoom in and appreciate those corners they're not too shabby I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with them so yay for project bags I mean you can never have too many right uh, okay what's next circular logic um, so we go from from one ink circles design to another and this is called circular logic did I No, I, I shared this on Instagram and um, it's a cheap printout of my of my hard copy uh, this is what it will look like and if um, if you're familiar with uh, Tracy's design the ink circles design she has beautiful mandalas and um, uh, for some stitchers and I know I'm one of them in particular uh, sometimes they feel that it can be a little bit repetitive to sort of stitch the same thing over and over again in in the same chart I mean there are only so many days right and um, we have to stitch all the things uh, we'll never make it through our stashes but anyway um, so um, again through through Michelle there is a group of us who are doing sort of a round-robin ink circles challenge and 
we are in groups of four and um, our particular group of four we all wanted to stitch circular logic so we each picked our own um, fabric we each picked our own floss and um, picked a spot uh, we're stitching our one quadrant and then we will on a quarterly basis so every three months we'll package it off and ship it to the next person and then in turn we will get a package from the person before us and um, so over the course of the year um, a chart will travel four times and four people will have each worked on a quadrant so at the end of the year we'll have a fully finished chart a uh, fully finished design so this this was the one that I had selected and I'm in a group of three of three others who also selected this one and uh, and this is where I am I am stitching on a brown linen called peppercorn it's a 36 count and who is it by color and cotton uh, color and cotton and the floss that I'm using is a uh, dinky dyes silk for the variegated floss and then for the solid outline that I'll be doing um, it's going to be in a Cosmo floss um, I, I asked for some assistance on Instagram to help me pick between a lighter or darker blue in the darker blue one so which which I'm kind of a little bit grateful for because the blue in here just ended up being a little too light for my liking so I think that the stronger blue will help bring that um, that sort of a uh, turquoise uh, to life in in the variegated floss so yay um, this uh, so all I have to do well I, I have a little more to do our, our deadline is um, end of March so I'll, I'll easily have it done in the next uh, in the next week or so so that is my oh and if you want to see the floss this is this is the dinky dies and I picked up several several Cosmo flosses because I couldn't choose <laughs> which shade of blue so there that's that's what we're looking at it's so funny how you know when you look at a skein of floss and you see the colors and then when you see it translated it sometimes something gets missing like the blue here just seems so much stronger and I guess when you look at each individual strand against a, a different color um, it changes and uh, so sometimes it's a surprise uh, sometimes it's a disappointment um, this one I'm, I'm quite happy with I, I have no complaints and thank you for everyone who chimed in on Instagram offering your um, insight and suggestions so that is my round robin circular logic ink circles what else is next oh so vinyl I'll talk about this vinyl project bag. Uh, I did a second vinyl project bag. Um, I used the fabric. Uh, again, I, I picked up at Michael's. It was it was dirt cheap, and um, I don't know if they were clearing it out. And it's the same fabric that Caroline used for her Evertote um, uh, pouch that she gave us for the retreat of Stitch North last year. And so I, by coincidence, have the same fabric, and I made this final pouch. So it's a little bit different than the other one. It was, I have to say, a little bit of a challenge. It, it uh, wasn't assembled in a way that was familiar to me. So I just had to have faith in the construction process and see how it turned out. So uh, it turned out really well. I'm, I'm very happy with it. And the, the key, the key, so there's a big window here in front. Let's take everything out so you can see uh, so big window in front and the amazing awesome thing is it's flat right it's flat but there's a little secret at the bottom 
It has a bellows. It has a little inverted hidden pleat so you can open it up. It's a little bit <laughs> it's a little bit awkward here for me without a service but um, so it sort of bellows out to allow something of more substantial um, thickness to, to fit inside without it sort of warping and it's also it stands so people I know can use it for it's, it's great for knitting um, you know I'm not that keen on the vinyl like sometimes it can feel cheap but I definitely appreciate the benefit that uh, that one has to, to be able to see to see everything without having to dig in and open everything up so so this was vinyl bag project number two and what's inside we have courtesy of shaded stitchery we have a black black butterfly sampler I shared a picture of my progress on Instagram and uh, I got really positive feedback and and I'm happy with it it's it's a little bit of a different project for me I love the fact that it's monochrome and um, what am I stitching it on? I'm stitching it on. So here, this is this is where I am. I kind of stopped where where I left things. There's my butterfly. I'm stitching it on a. Uh, the fabric color is called Exceptional. It's 36 count linen, and uh, it's from Fortnite Fabrics. It's my first time working on Fortnite Fabrics, and. Uh, it's it's really nice. I love I love this one. The ver the um, the variation in the uh, it's got um, cream and greens and browns and beiges, and I thought it would go really nice with with the black. Uh, the flosses that I'm using, uh, it's monochrome, but I'm going to be using three black flosses. Um, these are all Roxy Floss Co. And you know I don't know if you'll be able to tell which is which. <laughs> But um, one of them is called for the chalkboard. That's this one I'm stitching so far um, in this one right now. That's chalkboard. This one is vamp. And this one is licorice all sorts. So I'll be stitching the whole project in, in each of those three colors. So I like, yeah, what, what I like about it, this has back stitching too. Let's see if I can get in closer. The the back stitching and even the thread count and the and the thickness of the thread gives it a slightly spidery quality to it. It's almost ethereal. Um, you can see a lot of the linen through the back and in between, and um, it 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 gives sort of a delicate air to it that. I mean, for a butterfly, I thought was quite appropriate. So that is my black butterfly sampler shaded stitchery. Now, what? Oh, okay. Let's talk about my new craft. Um, you know, I know a lot of people at the at the beginning of the year. Um, have intentions not to spend a lot of money or to dial back or they do different challenges that allow them to earn money based on what they've stitched so I thought you know 2023 I'm, I'm definitely gonna be, gonna be cutting down on my on my stitching purchases and my workaround to that was to invest in not a lot but to invest in a new project a new craft called sashiko and uh, sashiko is also um, using a needle and thread it's uh, from japan it translates to uh, little stabs and this is i bought a kit it's a sashiko sampler and this will create a dishcloth, and um, it's two layers of uh, cotton linen blend. Uh, the pattern name, it's called uh, Mountain Range. I don't know if you're gonna see it up close. So it's a little chaotic, but there is logic to it. 
and um, and this is where I am. Um, oh yeah, so the the fabric is a linen cotton blend. The the thread that it uses it's almost like a like a pearl cotton like a pearl cotton floss. It's hundred percent cotton. Um, it's from the same company that does um, uh, Cosmo flosses. And uh, yeah, so it's just a regular cotton. If you're used to stitching cross stitch, uh, working with this is going to feel like you're you're stitching with a with a candle wick <laughs> because because it's so thick. But um, and the needle too. I mean, the needle it's it's practically a, a sword compared to um, compared to a cross stitching needle with a blunt tip. These are very a uh, very heavy gauge. Um, a little bit larger eye, a very sharp point, and um, well, here I'll just show you. This is this is where I am. It's I'm I'm almost finished, guys. Like that's that's pretty awesome. It's this is pre-printed, so you can see the stitching lines. It's pre-printed, and you just go at it in and out, in and out, in and out. Um, starting and stopping are a little bit different from cross stitching but I find that this kind of project was perfectly suited for um, you know I had to take a couple of long bus rides and I got so much done on those that uh, it's very satisfying you're not looking at a chart you don't need to worry about counting um, you just need to worry about <laughs> running out of running out of um, thread, and I think I'm I'm not going to have enough thread to go through this um, to finish this project. So yeah, you just you just weave you just oh, so you can't even see what I'm doing. You just weave in and out, and then pull. That's it. So. Uh, this really gives a lot of structural integrity to the fabric and it was originally used as a darning technique and, and if you've tried it before you absolutely know why um, it's so sturdy I really love the look of it and the feel and uh, I'm looking forward to finishing this uh, and again this is something that I can pick up I don't need a frame I don't need a hoop I don't need a stand I don't need a special lighting I don't need my my readers or magnifiers so uh, having a project like this is is absolutely perfect and and I recommend it <laughs> Ryan endorsed Uh, what else do we have? Oh well, let's let's go back to stitching. I've got. Let me look at my list here. Um, oh, okay. So one more. It's sort of a half finished object. Um, this this is my knitting bag, my knitting tote, and uh, a f a few videos ago, I talked about. Um, using up some self-striping sock fabric from uh, timber yarns. Uh, I have I have several of skeins from them, and and I really love them. Um, but honestly, I can only knit so many socks. So I found a book um, called. Is it here? What is the book? Knit Happy. Knit Happy with self-striping yarn. The author is uh, Stephanie Lockman. And I picked a design um, called uh, Rainbow Adventure Fingerless Mitts. And I can show you a picture here. That's good. This is my working copy here. So I don't know if that's her, <laughs> um, but this is this is the project. That's what I'm knitting. Uh, these are going to be sort of like my dog walking gloves. Um, it's nice to have the fingers free, um, but it's also nice to have the the cushion of a glove and uh, and a little bit of the warmth. So I finished. I finished one. I did not weave in the ends and um, yet and, um, <laughs> and and this is where I am. There's some new techniques that uh, that I'd never explored before. Uh, one of which is doing something with a thumb and uh, that's my project. It, it wasn't difficult 
the you know the thumb was very difficult because I, I don't like working with double pointed needles and sorry stitchers and I'm sorry I, I won't take up too much more time with this I, I, I know there's a lot of multi crafters out there so um, if you're a knitter you might be interested but anyway the uh, the thumb was new and novel for me um, it was a little bit of a challenge but in the end I'm happy with with how it worked out so that's my fingerless glove right thumbs up thumbs up <laughs> uh, what else was I gonna say oh the color it's called hocus pocus and I think it was part of a Halloween collection I like neon and um, this definitely has some neon but it does read a little bit Halloweeny a little bit sort of witchy socks striping but um, but I really like it I love the way the thumb sort of feeds into the hand We've got some ribbing and fingers crossed I can get the other one taken care of before uh, before summer hits <laughs> because I mean I, I don't like knitting in summer very much. Okay what else do we have? Plans. Oh let's talk about plans. We'll, talk, we'll just talk about random things. Plans um, I, I always have to have an ink circles on the go and my one to take over is this one Garden of Zig and this came with the floss pack I'm gonna be stitching this with my friend Desiree um, in the States and um, I got to meet her at Stitch North last year and it uses a uh, cottage hardened threads some of them are fairly solid a couple of them are quite heavily variegated I think you can see the colors through the plastic there and I had some trouble trying to pick a fabric and the fabric that I originally was going to try stitching with was uh, just a white uh, this was the same as what did I stitch on I can't even remember. <laughs> um, this was the same, oh, as, as the Womp Womp. Um, so it's a 36, 38 count um, linen. And uh, I, I thought that that would go nice with, um, with the colors of the floss. And it would be similar to, to what, um, the, what the model uh, was stitched on. However, when I was working on the, the Mantis Life, um, the other ink circles I really I really thought maybe this fabric might be a good choice for it so what I did I thought well I have plenty I have plenty of space <laughs> so I can use this whole side it'll all fit in here and I thought you know it's it's got the greens it'll help you know give that give that garden vibe <laughs> uh, yeah, I need to do a better floss toss on this. So, so th this is my plan. I want to get this started as soon as I get that ink circles, the circular logic in the mail, and then I'll, I'll jump right into that one. Um, other plans. Um, Andrea, a friend of mine in Australia, had worked on this project and I and I just fell in love with it and she was kind enough to pass the stash for me and uh, uh, so she sent me two actually and they're little thimble purses uh, this is one um, that, that I'm that I'm gonna tackle thimble purse and uh, the chart itself is not very large I think it's more about the construction uh, the final finish of the of the stitch and I finally um, the pause for this was I didn't have the hardware so I finally I finally picked up the hardware it's it's pretty tiny guys it's it's pretty tiny I don't know if you can tell um, am I doing that right <laughs> how, how big that is um, 
But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to jumping into this. I don't have any of my flosses picked out yet. I don't have the colors, um, my linen color yet, but it's a small project. Uh, it shouldn't take me too long. And I've never done any um, purse before. So um, I, I think that this will be a fun project to try. And, um, you know, I mentioned Stitch North a couple of times. Uh, the next Stitch North is the retreat is coming up in April for, for us. And um, I, I'd like to participate in the Smalls Exchange. And so if, if this works out well, this might be a small um, that I will be um, including in the exchange. Thimble Purse, oh, designed by Brenda Gervais. Um, Brenda Gervais, gotta love her. Now, what else do we have? Just a couple more things. Um, hands Across the Sea. Oh, these, by the way, uh, I picked up from Dollarama. Um, they're like a, a dollar and a quarter. So these are my project bags now before they become actual functioning works in progress. And um, this chart is called Emily Calwar 1890. And it is Hands Across the Sea. Uh, when I saw this, it was like my heart stopped. <laughs> I, I fell in love with the juxtaposition of the two styles of fonts, like the severe modernity of this sans serif, and then this sort of heavier Baroque um, um, font below it. And the fact that they had coexisted in the same chart really, really kind of tickled me. And I, I am about the band sampler. And so these motifs at the bottom, I thought um, would be nice bands to stitch. And so I was, you know, telling my friends, Nikki and Betsy, how much I loved it. And they went and treated me to it. I mean, I mean, how sweet is that? So uh, that, that's, I guess, my little bit of happy mail this week. So thank you, Nikki and Betsy. Um, I, I don't know if um, if you guys are familiar with that. The secret, remember the secret? It was like conceive, believe, receive, and uh, I I didn't buy into it. I didn't support it. It was like, you know, cut out a picture of a bike from a magazine, and it's gonna show up at your door, right? Like that. Where, where's where's the work part involved in that? So you know, it was a philosophy I never subscribed to. However, I do believe in. The power of positive thinking and the message that you send out in the universe is important and the fact that I sent the message out that I really loved this chart and they were kind enough to make my dream come true um, really was very special so thanks Nikki and Betsy and I will do my best to honor this um, to the best of my ability. So oh, I've got silks on order for it. I, I want to stitch it in the um, uh, Soie d'Arger, um, the Overa Soie. And um, so we'll get going on that as soon as I finish up maybe the, the Black Butterfly Sampler. That's the plan. And then one last thing I want to share. This is also Stitchy Kindness um, from my dear, 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 dear friend Ellen at Tamox Maximum Cross Stitch. And um, one of her latest designs, I don't know if you've been following her, they're just absolutely beautiful and crazy and amazing. Um, one she did is called the Friendship Sampler. Maximum cross stitch. And I'm in it. <laughs> I am, I think that's me right at the beginning <laughs> with my cat Stanley. And uh, it's a, such a sweet idea. It's completely customizable. You can change the font. You can change, or you, you can change the lettering. You can change the initials you include. You can change uh, the expression. Um, you can customize the motifs and the people that you want to include. And uh, it was just such a sweet idea. And um, so I'm very grateful that she gave me um, gave me a copy. And I've already started kidding it up. Um, it, it calls for Leo and Roxy, and it also has some DMC uh, conversion. And uh, so I do have some of the floss. I'm, I'm missing 
yeah, I do have some of the floss. Uh, I'll probably stitch it on a Cedar River um, linen, maybe overcast might be kind of nice. And um, sort of as a, as a pay it forward, um, as, a, as a giveaway, because she gave this to me, I, I want to support her. So I will buy one on behalf of uh, any of you who might be interested in in also stitching this or having this in your collection and um, you can do so by leaving me a comment um, you, you don't need to say anything you don't need to say you want it if if you leave a comment I'll, I'll put your name in the draw and um, and if you're if if I pick you and you want it that's awesome I'll, I'll, I'll take care of it getting it to you so the, the rules of engagement do not use the word giveaway um, you must be 18 or over so we can get your address um, am I missing anything it's not affiliated or sponsored with uh, YouTube in any way and um, yeah friendship settler and uh, am I at the end of my list um, I didn't answer many I didn't answer any questions at all okay um, since I've come to the end of my pile um, let's let's go through them okay uh, Lorraine we already talked about how I store my floss um, Sheila asks um, what is your occupation you are so artistic it must be something really creative Sheila, I did not pay you to write this. I, I'm quoting directly. I had nothing to do with it. Um, that, that just tickled me to death. So uh, my occupation, I'm by trade a project manager, um, a PMP. And uh, currently I, I've been doing freelance and contract work for maybe the past 15 or so years. And um, for most of those years, and certainly recently, I've been in product development um, with a toy company and specifically in the activities division so fortunately I've had um, an amazing opportunity to call upon my knitting and sewing and crafting skills and experience growing up with different with different craft projects um, that we've been exposed to and um, I've been able to apply that to, to my work so yeah I'm, I'm really hashtag blessed for for having that opportunity um what else oh margaret wanted to know my favorite oh because i talked about you know my one year anniversary and so she says what's your favorite celebratory cake or dessert um i you know i don't think i have one per se i know growing up my favorite birthday cake and, and this is not a memory that you know where people tell you oh you used to do this or used to do that um my memory is more, um, I, I do have this very clear memory. My requested birthday cake was the, can't remember the brand name, maybe it was Jello, no bake cheesecake that comes in a box um, from the grocery store. You mix up the crumb base, you mix up the filling, uh, you can buy a tin of cherry filling to pour on top but I loved it. I absolutely loved it. So um, it's been many years since I've had that, but that that was my most requested birthday cake. Um, yeah. yeah, that's all I can say. I do, I do like sweet treats. Um, uh, the last thing I baked was a gingerbread and, uh, oh, and a pumpkin loaf. So I like those because you can you know, make it and sort of nibble on it throughout the week rather than having this elaborate plate of dessert and you know you wolf it down in two minutes and then it's gone um cookie stitch asked what my favorite tea flavor was and uh i like many teas there are some i definitely don't like i i'm actually not a fan of green tea um i don't care so much for the astringent quality of it um i don't like smoked tea um, I love any black tea, any white tea. Um, uh, I think you will always find in my cabinet uh, an English breakfast or an Irish breakfast for morning, and then um, an Earl Grey, uh, sometimes Jasmine um, for the afternoon. So those those are my two go-to teas. And 
Oh, I hear my dog. I hear my dog whining. I have a dog. Someone says, oh, you have a dog? Uh, yeah, I have a dog. Uh, her name is Stella and uh, she's a rescue. Okay, she, she really has to go out. So um, I'll, I'll maybe come back to these questions um, in my next video um, or I can talk about them in Instagram, what, whatever works. So anyway, thank you for joining me today. Um, I, I really appreciate it as always. And again, um, your comments are always welcome. I love re reading them and replying to them. Thank you for joining me. Um, take care, be well, be kind to each other, uh, have the best possible day you can. And um, until then, see you next time.